If you don't know what the Tiger King is, then you haven't been on the internet. This is one of the wildest documentaries I think I have ever seen. Who knew there was a secret world of tiger breeders in America and every corner of it is run by the greasiest people you will ever see. There are more missing teeth in this documentary than a bench full of hockey players. And who knew you could buy a tiger cup for $5,000? I don't know if I'm wrong for thinking this, but I think that's way too cheap for a tiger. Shouldn't a tiger be like $100,000? I don't know, like a million dollars? They are so rare but that is why we are here because this is how crazy the documentary is it left us with so many questions about what the hell is going on and that is why i'm bringing you today's list of top 10 unanswered questions from tiger king if you haven't seen tiger king yet i'm going to warn you there's going to be a lot of spoilers for the documentary so like you might want to see it before if you haven't seen it i don't know or you don't care about spoilers if any of you at home are looking to grab some more most amazing top 10 content you should check us out on instagram and facebook we're starting to do facebook exclusive content so there's going to be a ton of stuff over there we also have a ton of stuff on our instagram page as well and you guys are going to want to stick around till the end of the list because i'm going to be doing a ton of pet shout outs which you guys love so much remember if you want me to shout out your pet you can hit me up on instagram and without taking any longer let's get into this list at number 10 let's start with the price of a tiger let's start with the question that was addressed in the intro how the hell are you able to get a large cat for five to ten thousand dollars it seems like it's not nearly enough in the documentary there's an interview with joe exotic where he talks about the price of a cub and he says five thousand dollars now i have a few theories of this i think it could be that joe exotic could be undercutting the whole market so he can sell the most tigers because as stated in the documentary that is his main form of income so maybe before joe started breeding and selling tigers people were paying like thirty to fifty thousand dollars and then he changed the whole market because i looked up the most expensive cash cats in the world, like house cats, and the most expensive one was an Ashira that can run for $100,000, and it's just a house cat. Mind you, it's a very rare, pure breed of house cat, but it's just a, a cat. It's, it's not a it's, it's not a tiger. There are less than 4,000 tigers left in the world, and you can get one for less than the price of a Honda Civic. And number nine, we have, that was a sex cult, right? That what we saw right there. Partway through the documentary, you meet Doc Antle, who has a gray soul patch and a ponytail, which only means he's up to no good. He owns one of the largest zoos in America, and it is flush with tigers and surprisingly a bunch of women who've been living on the property that he owns in houses that he built for them. A lot of them have been living there for a long time time. Some of them have been living there for 20 plus years. These women change their names legally to names that Doc Antle gives them, and it is made clear by one of the former women who work there that all these women are having sex with him. Or at least they have sex with him to move further up in the company because that's the fastest way to move up. He pays them almost nothing and even chooses what clothes they wear. This is a cult, right? This dude is running a tiger sex cult. Also, everyone calls him Doc Antle because he's apparently a doctor, but he got his doctorate in natural sciences from the Chinese Science Foundation. I don't know if that's very legitimate. At number eight, we have, is Joe Exotic a pretty good country singer? Something that kept popping up throughout the documentary Tiger King was Joe Exotic's music videos where he's singing country music. Here's the thing, I don't have a great ear for music, but every time it came on, I thought, his singing voice is pretty good, especially when you hear the dude talk. His voice sounds like nothing close to the singing you hear in the documentary. So is this guy able to pull it off? Well, it's not him at all. Like a few pieces are him, but it's mostly not him. He hired two low level country music singers. And by hired, I mean he got them to do all the work for free. I don't get how this guy is able to get so many people to do stuff for him for free. The two real singers are Vince Johnson and Danny Clinton. And number seven, we have what happened to John Finley's teeth? Something that is very hard to miss while you're watching the documentary is where on earth did John Finley's teeth go? Now, I don't want you at home to think I'm ragging on the poor dude. I'm just very curious as to where all his teeth went. Was he in a massive brawl? Did he open beer bottles with his mouth? Did the Tooth Fairy strike a really good deal with him for all of his adult teeth? Well, most of them. Most of you at home are probably thinking it's meth. Both John and Joe were very open about how they used to smoke meth together and quite regularly. And meth has a knack for making your teeth fall out. But all of you at home would be wrong. His teeth actually fell out from a medical condition. He has a genetic disorder that causes him to lose his teeth. On the bright side, he's got a full new set of teeth. Yay, John's got new teeth. We are so happy for him. At number six, we have you're allowed to bring tigers to the mall? Only in America, like for real. I don't know any country in the world where you can get a tour bus and travel from mall to mall and show off baby tigers to the public and it's totally fine. It doesn't seem legal at all, but I guess that it totally is. I don't know how this is 
is allowed. Can someone please write in the comment section and tell me how this is legal? But Joe Exotic used to get a big part of his income from doing this before Carol Baskin shut him down. Maybe it's because they were just baby tigers so they wouldn't really hurt anyone or because they're so cute everyone wants to see them. I don't know. But I do have to say that tigers at the mall sounds like the most American thing I have ever heard of. And number five, we have how famous is Doc Antle? This guy pops up in the documentary a lot. He's got a massive plot of land, a huge zoo, a ton of exotic animals. He owns a bunch of houses on this land and he has like eight girlfriend, wife, tiger cult, mistress things going on. And he's been on Letterman, but I've never heard of him. He can't be that big of a deal, right? Well, actually Doc Antle has been involved in the film and music industry for decades and was biggest in the 90s and the early 2000s. He was in charge of all the wild animals on movies like Ace Ventura, Jungle Book, and Jungle Book 2, as well as a number of other films. When it comes to music, he's worked with Janet Jackson, Britney Spears, and P. Diddy. This dude has been working behind the scenes with some massive stars for a long time. And number four, we have what if Joe Exotic was president? So an interesting wrinkle in the whole story is that Joe Exotic runs for president. What would the world look like if instead of Donald Trump sitting at the helm of America, you had someone even more surprising? There would be a tiger in every home in America. There would be a major zoo in every state. Crystal meth would be added to the government-issued American Food Guide. I actually wish this kind of happened just so I could have more Tiger King documentary to watch. And number three, we have Was Doc Antle Killing Tigers? Now, one of the biggest twists at the end of the documentary is you learn that Joe Exotic has been euthanizing his own tigers. How he would do this, we don't know, but it seems like he was most likely shooting them. He defends that he had to do this because they were old and sick. Now, Doc Antle, on the other hand, has a rumor floating around about him that he would keep cubs for a while, basically until they weren't good enough to share with the public, and then he would kill them himself. This was before they were old or sick. This was just when he could no longer make money off them and they were just another mouth to feed. This is insane. And on top of that, he apparently has an on-site crematorium. I think once you're doing your own cremations, you gotta be hiding something. You don't buy a crematorium unless you own a morgue or a funeral home or you're trying to hide the massive bodies of some huge dead cats. At number two, we have is Carol Baskin as bad as Joe Exotic. Carol Baskin is the owner of Big Cat Rescue. It's a place that finds large cats that have been kept as pets and takes them into her own sanctuary so she can save them. Now this seems like a very noble thing to do, but then she charges people to come into the sanctuary to see these cats where all the tigers are in cages and it's basically just a zoo. On top of that, she doesn't pay any of her employees. They all work as volunteers and she is a millionaire with a multi-million dollar business so she could afford to pay people. She is also putting up videos of the cats on YouTube and getting millions of views so she might be profiting off the cats even more than Joe Exotic does. Mind you, she does not breed cats and Joe Exotic does breed cats, but Carol Baskin might have killed her second husband. And she also forced Joe Exotic's elderly parents out of all their savings by suing them because she was so bloodthirsty to shut down Joe. And for the number one spot we have, did Carol Baskin kill her husband? This was by far the biggest unanswered question of the whole documentary. Where the hell is Carol Baskin's ex-husband? He was a multi-millionaire. He was ready to divorce Carol. Carol threatened to kill him several times. He got in a restraining order against her and then out of nowhere he was gone and a body was never found. He left no no behind telling people where he was going he just vanished and Carol was the prime suspect in the investigation. Carol claims that he was starting to show signs of Alzheimer's so he could have just walked off or he might have died in a plane crash because he was going on unregistered flights. But every person who was close to him says the Alzheimer's story was bogus, that the dude was sharp as a knife and there was no way he could get a plane into the air without there being some sort of record of it. Not to mention that Carol took everything from her dead husband's family and removed everyone who might have been interested in solving his murder from the company. And just so you all know, after this documentary was finished, they reportedly reopened the investigation to his murder. There's so many twists and turns to this whole thing. All right, everyone, that has been our list. And as promised, I'm going to be doing some more pet shoutouts. Remember, if you want me to shout out your pet, you can hit me up on Instagram. I pick new pets every day. So if you don't get picked one day, you can message back another day. If it takes me a little while to get back to, I'm very sorry. I have a lot of these to do. I usually pick two message last. So if you just keep messaging, you might get in. That's your best chance of getting in. And without taking any longer, let's shout out some pets. First off, we have Muffin, who's the cutest little cat I've ever seen. I love her little toy. Then we have Mila, who has some of the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. Look at those eyes, they're so great. After that, we have Dante, who looks like a big, strong boy. And I wonder if he's named after Dante from Devil May Cry, or from Dante's Inferno, or maybe he's just 
a loose Dante just out in the wild. We don't even have a, he's not even connected. He's just a loose one, just Dante, Dante. Then we have Borscht, who's a very cute cat with the most Russian name possible. I think that, yeah, that's for sure the most Russian name possible. And to close it out, we have Chewy, who is very cute and very little, very little dog. Okay, everyone, that has been our list. Thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Until next time, I have been your host, Chad Arena, and watch Tiger King if you haven't seen it yet. You should totally see it. It's so good. All right, bye.